Well, Claudia, I feel like everybody's coming to Vegas these days to come train and take advantage of the PI and all that stuff. And you're leaving Vegas to go train. So give me an idea kind of, you know, why you decided to take that route. So Vegas is home, right? I'm comfortable here. I want to get out of my comfort zone. I have great training in the PI, but I feel like I have good tactic and strategic training in New Jersey. You know, I have amazing coaching coaches Mike Henry and Ricardo Meda it's been a good addition to, to my life to my career and I'm taking advantage of that no question the last time we got to see you fight was in July you picked up a win but it was clear you weren't very happy afterwards so you know going back and looking at that on tape and learning from what what lessons did you take out of that fight I feel like I did I did enough to win but I could have done a lot more you know and like I said those big transitions in my life are very difficult are very hard in my personal life and in my and also it's affecting my career you know so that's why I want to get settled and now I'm happy with the training I have I'm happy with the family I have in New Jersey you know so I, I feel like now I, I'm in the place where I needed to be to show good performances in the octagon. Are you happy with the weather in New Jersey though? No not with the weather <laughs> it's been a struggle but it's worth it though. No question. You were trying to come back in, in uh, earlier in, in 2019. You got hurt. So I'm kind of curious what that was like for you kind of mentally. I mean, you're, you're like you said, you're going through all these transitions and, and then you got to put that on hold once again. I mean, was that a difficult time for you at all? It was very difficult because I really wanted that fight. I wanted to fight Cynthia Covill so bad, you know, and I was having an amazing camp. But then I twisted my ankle, you know, and um, I had a stem cells injection and I needed a couple weeks to let the, the injection work. So actually I had to pull out of the fight. If not, I would just need to end up needing surgery and I didn't want to do that. So once the four weeks, uh, once I, I gave my ankle four weeks, I was ready to go again and I I had to book, I, I was like, I told the UFC, I'm, I'm ready to book a fight again. And then they gave me Alexa Grasso, which I'm happy with. I was going to ask you, I mean, Alexa is a, you know, a popular figure. Had, had you followed her career? I mean, have you watched her development in the UFC? Yeah, she, I, I've been watching her. She's, she's, become, she's, she's becoming a better fighter every fight. She shows better skills, good heart, you know, and, and, and good cardio as well, you know. But I fought the best strikers in this game, in this division. You know, I fought Joanna. I fought Jessica Andrade, you know, which is no joke. I fought the best fighters in that division, you know. There is nothing that Alexa is going to show me that I didn't see. So I'm, I'm ready for her. I feel like I'm a more well-rounded fighter. I got the MMA game set up, and, and I feel good about that. Let's say stylistically, when a fight like that comes out, I mean, you said you faced all these great strikers, but you got to think she's probably a better striker than you are. But on the other hand, you're definitely going to be a better grappler than she is, right? So, I mean, when you have these type of matchups, do you feel like I'm at a disadvantage on the feet, or do you think, boy, I sure am at a big advantage on the ground? Yeah, I feel, I'm a, I feel like I'm a way better grappler than she is, and, and she's a good boxer. She had, had, had stand-up technique, it's very clean, and I like the way she fights, you know, but I feel like I, I, have, I have the game to beat her. Yeah. Does any part of you, like, get excited about the fact that maybe going in there and like just throwing down on the feet and seeing how you match up there? Or do you feel like, you know, fighting smart might be the way to go? Um, I'd be fighting smarter now, you know. Um, like, I like to brawl just like she does. She likes it too. So, of course, we're going we're gonna to get in there. It's going to get hot. But then um, I've been learning so much standing and correcting a lot of mistakes with Mark Henry that I'm, I feel good. I feel good to fight with Alexa on the feet as well. This will be a really big win for you. I mean, it's a big name, right? But I mean, you've been ranked for so long. I'm just curious how you feel, because I feel like there was a point where you were kind of burned out on even being a contender or talking about rankings. Or where do you stand right now? Do you, are you still like, I don't even care? I'm so motivated right now. Like, I'm so happy with my personal life and with my career and with the coaches I have around me, the people I have around me that I'm like, back with that thought fighting for the title again you know and to finally like get back in there and fight with the best in the world you know and one time of my career I was like ah, I'm just gonna do this fight I'm gonna take this fight and it's gonna be okay let's do this but now I have that fire back in my heart you know like the little kid from the Nazis that left her home with a big desire I feel like that again and, and I'm ready to go. 
you know, it's funny you've mentioned personal life a couple times. It's something maybe we don't, well, we don't even necessarily have the right to talk about it, but is that something that maybe fans don't consider when they think about the career of a fighter is how difficult it is to perform professionally if maybe things at home aren't going the way you want them to go? Yes, of course. This is a this is so big in our in our life. I feel like because like I watch my teammates, right? Like I mean, a, you know, a small team now, a very talented team, but a small team, right? And I I watch guys like Frankie Edgar. He finishes training and he goes back to his family, his wife, his kids, and, you know. And Eddie Alvarez, the same thing. They go back home to their family to be loved. I go back home for nobody. I'm by myself in New Jersey, in America. I moved here three years ago by myself trying to figure out what's up with that thing, you know, and it, it's it's pretty damn hard, you know. People don't realize how hard, how hard it is, and it's a big transition, you know. So calm down, let me work in the things I have to work on, you know, and um, I wake up every day, nobody has to tell me anything. Hey, Claudia, you got to train more. No, people have to tell me that I got to train less because I'm always working, you know, but things take time and people have to be patient about it. And it seems like you're in a good place now, so I'm curious. I mean, where do you feel like is, is your career is going? Because I think of you as this veteran, but you're still pretty young. I mean, for all that you've done in the sport, you're still pretty young. So where do you feel like you're at in your career? So I'm 31, 31 years old. I'm experienced. You know, I faced the best, the best of the best in this game. My fight was actually the first first ever strawweight fight in the UFC. You know, I'm a pioneer in the sport. I am fighting MMA since women was not in the UFC. So I've been doing all these amazing things for all these years, and I feel like now it's time to pay off. You know, the hard work it's gonna pay off. I feel like 2020 it's it's my year. You know, 2020 it's my year. I'm motivated. I feel ready to go. I have the right people around me, the right coaches, and let's go.